you need to attach an SSL certificate to your Amazon service? In this AWS tutorial, we're going to walk through how to attach an SSL certificate to the static website we created in the previous tutorials. I'm Thomas with Brain Trust Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack, please subscribe below to receive new content. So one quick note here is that you can't attach an SSL certificate directly to an S3 bucket. So we're going to use CloudFront as an intermediary. We're going to connect CloudFront to our bucket, and then we'll re rework our domain settings so that Route 53 is pointing to CloudFront instead of S3. Don't worry, I'll walk you through the entire process. But first, we have some requirements. All the requirements have been broken out into separate video tutorials, so you can just kind of pick through the videos that you need in case you have parts that's completed and you just need to skip through and get some other parts. Perfectly fine. The first requirement is an S3 static website bucket. You're going to need static site hosting enabled on your bucket. You're going to need some content in there and the permissions required to go along with that. So I'm going to link that in the card here. I think it's here. Is it over here? No, no, no. It's on the left side right here. In this card here and then down in the description below. One thing I want to mention here though, it's important to note, and I believe I mentioned it in the previous video, but I'm just going to reiterate it here. If you follow along with the previous tutorial and you choose a basic anonymous access policy, you don't want to store any sensitive information in this bucket. It's all publicly accessible. So I don't want somebody to accidentally put something like a PDF or a spreadsheet or something they want to keep private in this bucket. Don't do it. Anything is accessible by the public. It's just important to remember that. The next requirement is that you're going to need a domain. If you need help purchasing a domain, I'll link that video right here in the card and then down here below in the description. You don't have to use Amazon. I do in my tutorial. You could use GoDaddy or Network Solutions. I do recommend you use a larger provider. Uh, service can be a little bit difficult with the uh, smaller DNS registrars. Um, and I'd probably recommend against network solutions. I haven't had any real issues other than the fact that just, I don't like paying $28 for a $12 domain, right? Um, so with that in mind, I personally use Amazon. Uh, GoDaddy's nice, their panels are good. So that's another good option. I'm not sponsored by anybody here, just more given my opinions. And the last step you're going to need here is an SSL certificate. Again, here I'm using Amazon Certificate Manager, which I'll link the video right here and down here in the description. There's a couple reasons why you'd want to add the SSL certificate to your static website. One, I just believe in security by default. So it's just a best practice to always default to a more secure option. And SSL is that option. Two, it's free. Amazon certificates are completely free, auto renewing. There's no headache, no hassle. It's all handled for you and you don't have to pay any money for it. Three, if you're trying to market your static website, Google boosts the rankings for HTTPS enabled sites. So what that means is that you have a better chance of ranking in organic traffic by having this SSL certificate attached to your website than you would if you just skip this step and serve your static bucket as is. Now that we understand our requirements, what are we actually going to do in this video? First, we're going to create a CloudFront distribution. Then we're going to go through and connect that distribution to all of the requirements. So we'll connect it to the S3 bucket static website. We'll attach an SSL certificate, and then we'll hook up our domain. One important note here is that when creating your SSL certificate, you have to create it in the US East 1 North Virginia region. This is the only region at time of recording that allows you to attach this SSL certificate to a CloudFront distribution. So just remember that when we're going through and I'll point it out when we get to that point in the video. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. CloudFront is Amazon's CDN service. A CDN is a content delivery network. If you haven't used one before, which just means it's a globally distributed network of endpoints. In this case, it's 216 points of presence at the time of recording. We're gonna connect our S3 bucket, which is located in North Virginia. That's gonna push the content of that S3 bucket out to all of these geographically dispersed points of presence, reducing the latency for someone, say, across the world trying to access our website. 
For example, if somebody were in Australia trying to access awsrails.com, which is currently served from an S3 bucket in US East 1 or Northern Virginia, you'd have to pay that cost in terms of latency to travel all the way from Australia to make the request to Virginia, and then the response would have to travel all the way back to Australia. This takes time. Aside from the ability to add the SSL certificate, this also helps us reduce latency for users across the globe. The difference here is subtle as this website is relatively simple, but as you add more assets, the difference would become more apparent as these different assets would have to travel down the wire to Australia. Now that we understand what a CDN is and why we want to use it, let's get into the tutorial. So first you'll navigate to the Amazon console and then sign in. Next, go down to find services and we'll type in CloudFront. Here we get the opportunity to create a distribution. We're gonna use this first option here, the, the web distribution, and click get started. So if you click in the uh, origin domain name, this is gonna be our bucket. So you're gonna click on the name of your S3 bucket that you're currently using as a static website if you've been following along with the previous tutorials. We'll click our bucket name here. Origin path is a path within that bucket if say your static website was within a web folder or an HTTP folder or something like that, then you, you could set that folder here. And then it, if at any point you don't know what an option is for, you can choose here on the click on the, the I icon on the side and it'll give you a, a nice description of what that field is used for. Next we have the origin ID. This can be anything. Um, in our case, we're just gonna leave it as amazon-rails.com, but it does not have to match your domain name. It's just a friendly name of the distribution itself. We do not want to restrict access to our bucket. We're going to scroll down a little bit. We're going to check redirect HTTP to HTTPS so we can ensure that we have security by default. Next, you can continue to scroll down. You can add your C names. You want to add both the naked domain name as well as the www version. Then below that, we'll select custom SSL certificate. Once you select custom SSL certificate, it'll enable this, this dropdown. If this dropdown is empty for you and you've already created your SSL certificate, that just means that you didn't create it in the North Virginia or US East one region. As you can see here in the text above, um, so it's a, it's a frustrating experience if you, if you click there and you don't see your SSL cert, uh, that just means you need to create an additional certificate using the same domain in that region and everything will work just fine. So you'll click on your wildcard certificate and that's all we need to change. So we're gonna click create distribution. This will take a few minutes. So I'm just gonna pause the video while this, while this is in progress. But basically what's happening here is it's pushing all of the content in our S3 bucket out to the 216 edge locations of CloudFront. So it can take some time, especially depending on, on your bucket size, if you have a lot of content in your bucket. So you just gotta be patient and I'll pause the video and come back once it's complete. So our distribution is, is still propagating to the endpoints, but there's one quick correction I wanna make uh, because I made a mistake when setting the origin. So click into the ID here, go to your origins, click a check mark next to the origin and click edit. Here you do not wanna choose the S3 bucket from the dropdown, we actually want to paste in the static website URL, which is subtly different. It includes the region in there as well. So that's how you know this is the wrong URL. So we're going to leave this page open, click on services, and then I'm going to command click to open a new tab here. Navigate into my bucket that I'm serving as a static site. Click properties, static site hosting. And then we're gonna copy this URL, everything but the HTTP. So grab that, you can see this has the S3 website, US East one, our region is included in there. We'll go back to our distribution. We're gonna delete this current origin domain and paste in our static website URL as opposed to our just plain S3 bucket URL. If you get a permissions denied, this is you, you made the same mistake. Double check that your URL is the static site bucket URL and just paste it in here and click edit. 
Okay, so we can go back to CloudFront distributions and we'll just wait for this to, to finish now. All right, that took about 15 minutes or so, uh, but you can see now that the status is deployed. So the next step here is to update our Route 53 domain to point to this CloudFront distribution instead of our S3 bucket like previous. So we'll click into Route 53, navigate to our domain. And we're gonna update the A record. Here we currently have an alias record for our S3 bucket. And instead we're gonna wipe that out and we'll click on our CloudFront distribution now instead. We'll save that record. We can do the same for our www CNAME. Click save. Now we just have to be patient and wait for this change to propagate. Then we can flip over and test our domain. So if we add an S in there for the secure domain, you can see that that worked. Actually click on the lock to show the certificate. And see that, yeah, this is our, our wildcard certificate issued by Amazon and we're all good to go. You can see we've also got the HTTP redirection back to HTTPS, so you secure by default, which will really help you out in those rankings. I just wanted to take a second to say that I hope you're finding some value in this video, and if you are, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for, for future content. If you do, we got a limited time offer here. All subscribers reward my coworker, Bear, with one treat. The goodest boy ever. So hit that subscribe button. Yeah, there we go, buddy. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, leave questions or requests in the comment section below, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.